All right, folks, more extensions to Mendelian genetics. We're going to talk today about modifier effects. <sighs> so a modifier gene alters the phenotype produced by a primary gene. Okay, so one gene altering another gene, right? So it kind of, it's kind of expressivity, but it's caused by another gene. There's also a modifying environment. This one's a little bit easier, so we're going to pretty much concentrate on this one for our example. So don't worry so much about this. I'd just like you to be aware that that can actually happen. And there's probably something in the book as well to check up on that. And so that if you have some questions on the launch pad, you know you can use your information here. So modifying environment is where the environment influences the effect of the genotype on the phenotype, right? All of these extension, extensions, excuse me, are the same genotype. Genotypes never change. They are what they are. But the phenotype is what's variable. What we see is variable or how it acts or its manifestation of the gene. A really good example is Siamese cats where it's a temperature dependent color of the coat. So the dark pigment color only shows up in the extremities where the temperature of the skin is lower. So essentially the enzyme that causes pigment formation or changes uh, one molecule into the final version of the pigment is only active at lower temperatures. Let's look at an example. Here we are. We call that a phenocopy when an environment influences the genotype on the phenotype. <clears throat> and so you can see in the Siamese cat, wherever there's cooler temperatures is where we get the dark color. And so the biochemical pathway is you have a colorless precursor, so a molecule that must be turned into real melanin, right, in order to get fur color. So if the enzyme is not functional where it's warm on the body, right, no color, light fur. In the same way the colorless precursor, if the enzyme is functional at cooler temperatures, like in the feet, the tail, the ears, around the face, right, it exchanges to melanin, doesn't exchange, it modifies to a real melanin, which is a pigment that reflects dark, right, black light, essentially. Almost reflects everything, and it results in dark fur. Another example is the rabbit. There's a certain breed of rabbit that um, has the same temperature-dependent enzyme, and so in the cooler extremities, we see it's dark. So if it's... Uh, raised, right, in cold temperatures, whereas if it's raised above that where none of it can cool and none of its, none of its skin is cooler or cool enough for the enzyme to work, right, he turns completely white. <clears throat> Experiments showing how this is actually true. Here's the one in the warm temperatures. Here's the one in normal or cold temperatures. And then if you put an ice pack on part of the rabbit and you keep exchanging it for cold, cold, cold while this rabbit's growing up, you get a dark patch. So you could make designer rabbits and make a lot of money. Look, you could make a heart-shaped dark mark on its back and sell it for Valentine's Day. See? See? See how genetics can help you? All right, there you go. Modifying environment.